Today, my paper looks at how my body in motion makes and breaks digital space through what I call the camera walk, which is a performative procession that forms the core of my doctoral research. The camera walk takes place whilst my hand holds high a camera on a stick that shoots 360 video. This is my camera. The video then feeds into photogrammetric experimentation as a way of translating physical into digital space. And now I'm going to share my PowerPoint, hopefully without too many glitches. So first, I'm going to take you to Athens which is my place of origin. Um, we're heading to the very center, Omonia Square. This is a city of multi-story buildings that bear the common name Polikatikia, meaning multi-residence, even though they house both uh, flats and offices. Just a stone's throw away from Omonia Square is Eolu Street. And uh, this building that I'm circling there is an eight floor building block that for many years has housed mainly solicitors offices. When you go in, you find a, a rather beautiful interior, quiet, cool, stark, quite warm, with its paint peeling in places and a central staircase lit by an internal light well. What you see in this picture on the left is a photograph taken with a standard DSLR digital camera. And on the right is a detail of how this place was translated into space, into a kind of ruin with unexpected gaps and new openings. In the autumn of 2018, I walked this building up and down, holding high the extendable rod that carries the camera, holding it like a flag or a tour guide's umbrella. I can compare it with a handheld scanner or a witch's wand. It is a modern technical kit, but feels as ancient as a stick in a primate's hand. Its height and orientation matters. I usually carry it upright and a little ahead of me, like a flag, but at other times I encircle an object or slide it carefully under furniture when it becomes a scanner wand. The camera walk begins on foot and is a collaboration between a human body and a technical body a body that remains close, but is not a tool of expression. Rather, it is an instrument of collecting space in place. Space becomes place, says Tim Presswell, as humans invest meaning in a portion of space and then become attached to it in some way. A primary way that we become attached to a portion of space is through our feet. Walking involves a tactile connection with the ground, whether on the level of earth or on the many levels of a staircase. Walking repeats and oscillates, just like the glitch, between failing and falling and rising, between stable and unstable. Following the camera walk, in order to produce my phot photogrammetry, I hack the video into its constituent frames and feed it into software for photogrammetry as structure for mo from motion, also known as SFM, which is a manner of recreating 3D volumes from 2D image sequences. Photogrammetry is one of the principal techniques used in the production of virtual replicas for heritage conservation and audiovisual production. It involves specialist software that combine multiple images from different perspectives, calculate the different camera locations, and potentially recreate the volume of the elements as 3D models. However, the perception of photogrammetry as producer of high fidelity replicas gets tested when confronted with a dirty mesh that the software spews out. Software, sorry, scholar curator Gabriel Menotti explains that in photogrammetry's most recent applications to audiovisual production, SFM algorithms are employed less for the acquisition of the exact measures of the real than for the spectacular reproduction of its sensorial effects. This quest for medial verisimilitude most often requires the sacrifice of volumetric fidelity. 
So volumetric fidelity is sacrificed in favor of mimetic fidelity, which is less dependent on actual geometric accuracy than on the virtual replica's ability to resemble and perform as real in the media environment. This is achieved through reducing the face count of the polygonal mesh and giving its shape a cleaner, more regular geometry. Louisa Minkin, through her own experimentations, confirms that a mesh file acquired through photogrammetry will not be a well-formed object without substantial work. Things may not compile as they should, algorithms are buggy and automatisms glitch. It will need artisanal assembly, retopology and cleaning to produce a workable mod model. Minkin points out that digital dirt might manifest as baroque accretions or as residual contaminants. The cleanup of the digital dirt invites questions on what gets excluded or destroyed, in the words of Derrida, the more or less failures, the aborted ones, the debris, the rubbish. The debris, the rubbish, and the failures resonate both haptically and tactically to my practice. Rather than clean up the geometry of my mesh, I embrace its nebulous geometries and treat the software as a collaborator. But as you can notice in the images, there is more than debris here. There are holes in the mesh. The camera walk is a blind shoot, as the camera that I use has no viewpoint or LCD screen. So any notion of, of a cinematic frame subsides while the body processes the space kinesthetically. The camera frames the walk in terms of purpose, but does not frame the view, nor does it constrain the gaze. The frame of the 360 video is omniscient, a technical image that's not ready for the human eye to behold, thus rendering a viewfinder as superfluous. The camera acts like a small spherical mirror that sees everything, including my own body, that keeps moving, and it is precisely this movement that glitches the computation. For photogrammetry, a structure from motion to work, there should be a series of images where common points can be identified. Reflections, the movement of living bodies, the movement of trees swaying in the wind, all can break the calculations. Not only does my body not stay still long enough to be calculated as volume, it also blocks parts of the space and causes black holes of information that become holes in the mesh. My 360 camera can be seen as what Willem Flusser calls a dangerous tool one whose inherent virtualities are not yet known and whose purposes and directions can still be deflected and ignored, allowing acts of freedom and emancipation. Through the promotional videos that reveal its market, the camera that I use was designed for surfers and extreme sports enthusiasts, whereas I use it during gentle strolls. The 360 videos that it produces can be viewed in a VR headset with three degrees of freedom, whereas mine become fragmented building blocks for 3D models to be walked with six degrees of freedom in VR or used uh, within um, 3D animation. In my practice, the video footage of the 360 camera becomes 3D space via the paths traced with a body in the world, transcending the intentions of the tool in an act of freedom and emancipation. At the same time, my specific model was brought out in 2017 and discontinued in 2019. It is already old news, a technical relic to be buried and replaced by a new camera. In this way, it participates in what Joanna Zielinska calls the hubris behind the innovation agenda that fuels the global economy and that produces seemingly infinite amounts of technological fossils in the process. Rose Amendment describes the glitch not strictly as a result of technical malfunction, but as a break from an expected flow on the, of information that results in a perceived accident or error. A glitch occur, occurs on the occasion where there is an absence of expected functionality. Under this light, my moving body breaks the flow of the photogrammetric pipeline and causes an error in the shape of an absence, a gap, a hole. It disrupts the purpose of photogrammetry as maker of mimetic faithful replicas. My glitch is not a technical malfunction, as the software still performs, but rather an alternative, unexpected mode of using the software as well as the hardware. 
this might be glitchy. Free from the constraints of a viewfinder or the rectangle of an LCD screen, the camera walk lets me fully immerse myself in physical place and is a rehearsal of the digital space that it will become. It produces a paradoxical object, a mold of a room as a container of negative space. So the outside, as you will see, is actually its inside. The glitches present are created by a body disturbing this negative space by its perambulating animation created by multiple spherical video stills that have been split and put back together. It is also a kind of exploded and glued back mirror of where the camera walk took place. Multiple tiny reflective pieces get reorganized in 3D, enmeshed and textured into three-dimensional projections, a volumetric reconstruction as a mold and a cast of an existing inside. As a model made of photographs, it threads, it threads a, a place in between neither model nor photograph, yet both model and photograph. The camera walk performs as a chiasmus as it reverses real place into the inside out digital space. In the resulting model, the continuous mechanical time of the moving image reassembles and in the process gains a new depth. It documents the space time of the performance and turns it into an overlaid synthetic moment where multiple positions that correspond in different points in time sediment into a single stillness. Chiasmus, says Diana Silverman Keller, is the performance of crisscross movements between opposing sides in a variety of directions. There is another crisscrossing taking place here. Movement and flatness, video, switches into stillness and volume, CGI 3D. In other words, through the camera walk and subsequent photogrammetric computation, performance time plays turns into a digital 3D space that can be re-entered, re-explored, and reanimated through VR as a still image, as an installation, or as a short film. The glitch repeats and returns. It repeats and returns. The glitch electrifies and animates. It flickers, it surges, it announces trouble, it attracts attention. The glitch is not terminal, but it trips you up and it makes you slip up. The glitch signals trouble. The quality of the glitch is elusive and mysterious, a treasure trove and a gimmick, an effect and an effect. It is slippery both haptically and etymologically. It evokes an animation, a sudden sliding across an icy patch, a flickering of lights in a horror film announcing an unknown agent. The tactility of the glitch is both slimy and electric. Glitch is thought to be 1960s astronaut slang, slang for a sudden surge in current. The glitch is linked to the Yiddish word for a slip. Similar words, glitchen in German, glissade in French, the Latin gluteus and the Greek glistron, evoke a slipperiness with viscous undertones. The idea of the glitch is not limited to this animated slipperiness though. It comes also with notions of a broken flow, of something snagging and sticking, repeating, insisting. Between a slip and slipperiness and a snag and its friction is a smear, which is an action that leaves a trace, a pieces. There are two separate qualities in my photogrammetry, volume, which is cultural, and texture, which is photographic. The more photographs I use for the calculation, the closer the positions of the 360 cameras and the higher the polygon count will result in a more detailed model. The details may be erratic and nebulous, but the model is more dense while my body is mostly absent or cuts holes in the mesh. But if the mesh is lighter in terms of polygon count and the separate photographs are fewer, the model becomes less detailed and some of the holes begin to close up. Eventually comes the reversal of absence. Rather than glitching the space by cutting holes, my body now glitches the space by smearing itself like a friction burn on the floor and walls. The photographic texture takes precedence over the 3D model, and suddenly, rather than missing, I am all presence, haunting the space and covering up the details, embedding myself in the architecture like wallpaper or paint. 
Between this strange mix of presence and absence, erasure and overwriting, gaps and excessive debris, I returned to the space of the work through the model. Sometimes new pieces of architecture appear, such as when I bring down the polygon count and lessen the pictures, new parts of this corridor come up, and then here I am haunting. This is also a return to the day when I performed the camera walk, a resurrection of dead time. It is also a point of entrance to a, to a time that is completely still, but becomes reanimated by my hands manipulating the mouse or by the movement of my head in the arm. Louisa Minkin says that the digital model deriving from photogrammetry is in some sense a taphonomy, a transition of remains from biosphere to lithosphere or electric noosphere, replicated through e-currents into myriad death assemblages. The dictionary defines taphonomy from the Greek taphos, grave, as the study of process in affecting an organism after death that result in its fossilization. A fossil may also be a metaphor for the photogrammetric mesh, a relic, a mold, a remnant, a record, a transition from the live into a shell that is formed, marked, and broken by a body that makes space by moving in space. Thank you very much.